So Arduinos are amazing little tools for building uh, tangible media uh, prototypes or any kind of interactive prototype, but they can be limiting. And so there's lots of ways to get things to work on Arduino, like sound files. You can play sound files if you get a, uh, a dedicated shield or you can connect to the network if you get a shield for that. But if you can make your Arduino talk to your computer, then you can just use your normal computer to do some of that stuff. And often that's a much faster and a much uh, easier way to do your interactive prototyping. So I want to talk about how can we make an Arduino and a computer talk. And I'm going to work through a series of simple examples and I'm going to end up with uh, the picture that I'm showing here, which is like a little doll that twists around and uh, responds to the sound of music coming from the computer. And I'll show how I used both the Arduino and the computer working together to create this sketch. So I'm just going to run through some refresher examples just to make sure you understand how the Arduino works and how we hook it up. You've probably done this before, but just to kind of refresh your memory. The first thing I'm going to do is add an RGB LED to the um, Arduino. So we just hook up the three data pins from the bottom of the RGB LED into our PWM pins on the Arduino. And I'm going to use pins 10, 11 and 12. And I put a 220 ohm resistor in between the hookup wire there and the the legs of the, um, of the LED, just to um, protect the LED and pr to protect the Arduino as well. Then the, the fourth leg of the LED, in this case it goes to ground, so that's going to go into the breadboard and then around and down into the ground pin on the Arduino. So that's the sort of simple diagram, and if you want to pause the video you can uh, hook this up yourself uh, following this instruction, but I'm going to switch to um, my live camera and show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you why I made this, uh, this simplified diagram. Okay, so in all the examples today, like I've got a, a few hooked up already and I've just got them all plugged into the same computer, into the same Ar Arduino. And here is that little LED. And you can see the three pins, you might be able to vaguely see those three pins there, the blue one, the green one and the red one coming into the Arduino. So you just have to trust me <laughs> that what you see on the left is actually the same as what you can see there on the right. And I'm, because I don't want to waste time sort of um, unplugging and plugging things through this whole demonstration. So yeah, so what I'm going to do is actually in the Arduino code editor, I'm going to load up some code uh, to light up a tri-LED, a three, a three color LED. And I'll make this code available so you can load it up as well. So let's switch into the Arduino environment. And this is the tri-LED. And this is based off, if you go to the um, examples section and then go into basics, and there should be one called fade. That shows you how to um, fade a single LED in and out. I've just adapted that code so that it works with a, th a full color LED. So it's pretty simple. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the code. We hook up to those three pins that I mentioned. Uh, we keep track of what value each RGB is and then on the main loop we just loop through each time and increment the color so we gradually fade through a range of different colors. Now when you plug your Arduino into the computer uh, you'll remember that you need to check what the port is so if from the tools menu in Arduino look up the port uh, item and you'll see a number of them there and you should see one that's one that looks like dev forward slash cu usb modem blah 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 with some long number on the end and it'll say arduino mega or mega 2 blah 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 the kind of arduino that you have now that number uh, that one right there that's going to be important later on so remember where you find this okay you get it from the tools menu of the arduino sketch we're going to need that later when we're talking to the arduino from the computer but anyway i'm going to load that now and then it's going to upload my sketch. And what we can see is that that um, Arduino is, I'll just cover it up so you can see the light a little bit, bit better, is cycling through the different colors. Okay, so, so far so simple. The next one I'm going to show is the servo. So once again, I've already hooked this up and this is the simplified diagram of what that looks like. 
So we have a servo, which is just a little motor that you can control the angle of. You can control that angle by sending a signal uh, voltage on the yellow line, and that comes into either the yellow or the white uh, uh, wire coming out of the servo. And then it's got a ground and a plus five volt, and I've just hooked them up to the, um, to the Arduino. This is the code. I'm just gonna use the sweep example, and this is another one of those uh, examples that you can get from the Arduino examples folder. So if you go into folders and then there's one here called, uh, where is it? Basics. Uh, servo. It's in the examples for any board. Servo. And then go into the sweep one. And that's what you get there. Once again, it's pretty simple code. I, I won't go into it in a lot of detail, but just note that it's attaching to a servo which is on pin 9. If you have a servo attached somewhere else, it could be on pin 10 or 13 or 12, you just need to change that number. Now you might be able to hear the servo, but you probably can't see it too well, so just let me grab something to sh make that a bit clearer. I've got this little servo horn, which goes on the end. I'm just going to push that down onto that servo. You can see there that the servo uh, is moving around. We're still staying pretty simple. That's, what, that's all that that sweep example that does. It just moves the servo 180 degrees. The last one that I'm going to look at is adding a knob to control the servo. Um, and I'll just unplug this so it stops making that noise. So here we've got the same sort of servo set up but we've added a knob to that we can turn, a, a user can turn to give a signal, give some data into the Arduino. So on that, uh, on that knob, or you, it's called a potentiometer, there's a, um, a ground pin and a plus 5 volt pin once again and then the middle pin is where you get a signal from. And depending on where the person turns it, you get a different voltage out of that middle one. And that's what we're going to measure. And you can see that's the orange wire. And it goes across and then down into analog pin zero. And for this one, I'm just basing it on another of the examples called uh, the knob example, also from um, that servo section. So in the Arduino, if you go to examples and then servo and then knob, that's the code that we're going to be using. Once again, we just attach the servo on pin 9. And we also have this pot pin. That's where we're reading the knob from. Potentiometer is, a, is another word for that. So uh, we read, uh, use this analog read function to read in the voltage. And then we map that to some value between 0 and 1000. And from 0, it, we get a value that's somewhere between 0 and 1023. And then we map that to, but to a degree, to an angle between 0 and 180. And then we just write that value straight to the servo. I'm turning that knob and the motor of the, of the servo is moving around. So that's those three examples. Setting the LED color controlling a servo and then taking some data into the Arduino from a knob and then using that to control the servo. I want to sort of build on these three basic examples and show how we can go from just having the code working on the Arduino to start to have it working between the Arduino and the computer to get this communication happening. Just to sort of explain how we're going to do this, I'm going to use another really simple example called the analog read serial. And this is from the um, Arduino code examples as well. So if you go into the examples section, and then I think it's in basics, analog read serial. Here, um, we're going to read that data from the, uh, from the knob, but we're also going to display it. We're going to send it to the computer over a serial port. Um, so what you can see here is in the setup it actually says uh, serial begin and then it's got a number 9600. So this is um, starting a, a, a communication channel between the Arduino and the computer and the most basic way that an Arduino can use to talk to your computer is with the serial method. 
And actually, when you download your programs to the Arduino, you're actually talking over that serial port. So it's basically just through the, it's basically through the USB cord that you've got plugged in. That's with the, where the serial is happening. The number there, 9600, that's how fast the communication should go. And there's a number of different numbers you can use, but um, I usually just use whatever's in the example. It doesn't matter a lot if it's fast or slow, just go with whatever is in the example. 9600 9, is a fairly common one. So let's run this one and see what happens. So it's done uploading and nothing's happening because we're not actually using that serial, uh, that, um, that data from the knob to control the um, Arduino anymore. We're using it to send it to the serial. So what you want to do is in the Arduino environment, right up on the top left, click on this thing here that says serial monitor. Click on that and it will open up another window. And you can see the data that's coming from the Arduino. So you see here we've just got a whole lot of zeros coming through. Just also notice that at the bottom it's got that same number, 9600 board. That's how fast the connection is. If you change that to a different number that doesn't match what you set up, it won't be able to communicate. So you want to just make sure that that number's the same. So now if I take the, the little knob and turn it, we should see those numbers change. Right, so I've turned it about halfway, so it's getting 746. If I turn it all the way, I get that largest number, 1023. If I turn it all the way back to the bottom, I get zero. This slide just sort of sums up the idea that I've shown here. We're, we're, we're using that serial connection to let the Arduino talk back to the computer and we're sending information through that wire from the Arduino to the computer and we can do it the other way as, as well. We can send information from the computer to the Arduino as well. But it can be a bit of a pain and it can get complicated so one way to make it easier is to use a library called Fermata and that's what I want to show you now. So Fermata is a bit of software that you run on your laptop and on the Arduino uh, that makes it easier to communicate. And it sort of changes the way you approach the Arduino programming. Basically, once you use Fermata, your Arduino becomes kind of dumb. It, all it does is just runs the standard software and listens for connections that are coming in or commands that are coming in or requests for data and then just responds to those. So it's just running this program that's just listening and then the computer is saying uh, set the servo to be this angle, set the RGB to be this value, get me some data from pin number analog zero and the Arduino just hears those commands, goes off and gets data from analog zero and sends it to the computer. So the Arduino is just doing this one simple thing and the complexity of the programming kind of moves to the computer. So you may or may not have heard of processing. It's a creative coding environment, which is very similar to uh, the P5JS environment. P5JS, which many of you might have heard of, is written in JavaScript and it runs in the web browser. Processing is written in Java and it runs on the desktop. So there are some differences because of that, but overall it's very similar to P5JS. So if you go to the processing website, I'll just open that up, um, this is where you can download processing, so just click on uh, the download part and then uh, choose your operating system and you can download it. It's free software so you don't need to pay, um, but if you want to, you, you can support the um, Processing Foundation. So once you've got that downloaded, what you want to go do is go into the uh, library section and search on Arduino. Uh, search on Fermata. Yeah. So if you search on Fermata, let me blow that up. F-I-R-M-A-T-A. -A, you should see this uh, entry there. And that's the one that we're going to be using. So this shows how to set it all up. It's pretty easy, but actually you don't need to worry too much about that because it comes as a standard library in Arduino. So from Arduino, actually, if we go to um, our example section, uh, you should already have Fermata listed there in the examples for any board. 
And what you want to do is use the standard fermata. There are a range of different ones and the kind of differences can be a little confusing, but actually all you're going to need for this is standard fermata. Open that up and uh, just load that onto your Arduino. So now that that's done uploading, uh, we're not going to have to worry about the Arduino anymore. Other than plugging things into it, we're not going to have to do any programming on the Arduino at all. We're going to do all of the programming on the computer from now on and just send commands to the Arduino to turn things on or off or get data. So in processing, uh, once you've got that open, click on the Tools menu and then uh, Add Tool. Click on the Libraries tab and then search on Fermata. And you should see something like that. Uh, Arduino Fermata controls boards running the Fermata um, software. I've already got it installed, but um, if you haven't installed it yet, you just click Install uh, on the left there. So these slides just uh, run through what I've just done. We went to the Libraries page on Processing searched for Fermata there and then down, clicked on the link and that took us to the Arduino Fermata page. But we actually just went into the Fermata example in Arduino so we could use that. But this page tells you how it, how it all works. Use the standard Fermata from the example. Then we went to Processing, uh, clicked on the Libraries tab and searched on for the Fermata library there. And we need that because We've put Fermata on the Arduino. We also need to put Fermata on the computer so they know how to talk together. So this is the library for the computer part. Uh, and once you've installed that, you should be able to um, access examples for Fermata from processing. So let's go back to processing and open up that. So if I go to the examples section, and then if you scroll right down to the bottom, there should be a contributed library section. It's hiding behind my head. Let's move it out of the way. Contributed library section right down the bottom and if you expand that folder in there you'll see all of the libraries you've installed. One of them should be Arduino Fermata. That's what this says here. So let's run through some of those examples now real quick and I'll show you how they work. So I've made three. One where I can set the LED color of that LED from my processing sketch. One where I can get the value of the knob from the processing uh, from the Arduino into my processing sketch and one where I can set the position of the servo but the servo is kind of a little bit lazy and lags behind the knob. So I'm going to start with the LED one and this one is based off um, one of the examples called Arduino PWM. So PWM it stands for pulse width modul modulated. Um, it's just a way of controlling the intensity of the LED. So there it is in the uh, Fermata examples. If you load that up, that's what I've based this example on. So any of these examples, um, you know, you should be able to load them up and use them pretty much straight away. But if you want to do anything with them, you will need to customize them a little bit. So the Arduino part stays uh, the same and you do a little bit of custom, you do your programming on the computer to change how it works. Okay, so an example of that is here I've said I've created an Arduino object, I've said Arduino equals a new Arduino uh, and I'm getting a list of all of the Arduinos that are connected and I'm connecting to it. So let me just run that and show you what that gives. And it just lists all of those serial ports that you have on your computer. So the first one here says black iPhone wireless access point, uh, dev Bluetooth incoming port, dev C USB modem 44301. That's the Arduino. So you'll, there'll be a whole lot of these. Only one of them that is what you need. And that's that one that we looked at in the Arduino software. So here, uh, the, the number, the thing I'm looking for is dev CU USB modem 143301. That's the same one from the, uh, what, what we looked at in the Arduino before. And if I count through these, I've got one, two, three. It's the third one along. So I need to put the number two in here because it's an array and they always start from zero. Okay, <laughs> so if it's the third one, put in number two. If it's the fourth one, put in number three. If it's the first one, put in number zero and you'll get it out. 
If you can't figure out how the arrays work, there's also some, some commented code here where you can actually just put in the name of the port directly. Okay, so if you can't figure out how the arrays work, that might be an easier way to do it. Um, in my code here, I'm just drawing a rainbow background that you can see at the top here. And then in the draw function, I'm getting the color from the mouse and I'm sending that to my Arduino. And this is where the Fermata part is happening. I created that Arduino object at the start and here I'm saying to that object, analog write to pin 12, the value of this variable R, G and B. So each of those is getting sent to the Arduino. Should be able to see that See, it's going red there as I'm over the red, and so on. Now, when you run any of these examples, um, there's quite a detailed comment at the very top. And it may be tempting to just scroll past that <laughs> and uh, get, straight to the, get straight to the fun of programming. But I really would encourage you, when you first try these out, read the comment here because it really does explain how everything works and, and those numbers that you need to look for and how to set it all up. All right, so let's look at the next one. This is the knob input. So we're going to get input from the knob and uh, bring it into Arduino, uh, into uh, processing. It's based off one of the other examples here. It's Arduino input mega. Now, when you look at this, this list, you'll see that there's just an Arduino input and then an Arduino input mega. I chose the Arduino input mega because I'm using a mega. This is a, the style of Arduino that I have here is, an, is a mega. But if you're using a, a Leonardo or an Uno or any of, the, or any of the many other Arduinos, you'd probably just use the standard um, Arduino input. And then there's not much that's changed. Same thing here. We print out a list of all of the Arduinos and then we plug it into the second one because I know that the second one is, is the one that I want to use on my computer, but that might be different on yours, so you need to look that up. And then in the um, draw function, I'm reading this amount of the, of the knob into a variable amount, AMT, just by saying Arduino analog read zero for pin zero. So I'm doing an analog read on the pin that that um, knob is plugged into. And then I use that to draw a graphical representation of the knob to the canvas, just using the standard processing drawing functions, which are basically the same as the P5JS functions. Okay, so you can see I didn't change anything on that Arduino or how that's running. All I've done is uh, change my processing sketch. But now I can take that knob and if I turn it, I'm changing the, the value that's being read there. So it's changing the size and the angle of that line. Let's look at the last one, the lazy servo. And like I said, in this one, what happens is the... Um, when you turn the knob, it controls the servo, like the earlier example we looked at, but it also makes the servo a little bit lazy. This one is based off the Arduino servo example. So in the Fermata, there's another one there called Arduino servo. So basically, I create my new Arduino pin on, on uh, pin 9, and I say that it's going to be an Arduino servo. This is all in the example. Uh, and then I'm also doing some averaging just to get rid of some of the noise from that um, servo, uh, from, the, uh, from the knob, because it's a little bit noisy. I'm just trying to smooth that out a little bit. And then in the draw function, you know, I won't go into too much detail, but basically I find out what the amount of that uh, knob is by just doing an analog read. And then I average that out, so I sort of average over the last 10 of them. And then I map that to an angle that I want to represent on the screen and then use that to draw a triangle for where the knob is. And then I also send a command to the servo to move to that point. And I just sort of make it trail along behind it. So the servo moves along a little bit behind. So if I turn my... Let's see if you can see that. I might stick a post-it note on there so... It's clearer that the Arduino is turning. Let's make a little flag. Make it tangible, make it embodied. So 
Now, as I turn this, you see I stopped turning, it's got a bit of a lag in it. Now you could do all of this just on the Arduino, but you know, to do things like smoothing out movements and um, taking averages and using an array, that sort of stuff actually gets pretty difficult to do on the Arduino fairly quickly. So doing it on the computer is actually a much faster way to, to try things out, to try different ideas. Now I'm assuming that not many of you have had a chance to use processing before. I mean, I highly recommend jumping in and giving it a go. It's super um, accessible programming environment. It's really powerful. And if you've done P5.js, the transition from JavaScript to Java and processing, it won't be too hard. But there's also a way to use uh, Fermata with P5.js directly from the web browser. Well, almost. <laughs> there's one slight complication. We need to install a little bit of code in the middle in between the um, web browser and the Arduino. We also need to have a little server running on the computer that's passing the information back and forth as well. It's getting complicated, but it's actually not too hard uh, once you get it set up. So what we need to do basically is add in this thing here, a node library to bridge between the P5 sketch in the browser and the Arduino. So if you haven't heard of Node, uh, Node is a, um, a web programming framework uh, that lets you, you know, do web development, create websites, all sorts of stuff. But it has a lot of um, libraries that can also just run on your local computer. So if you just Google Node, that's called Node.js, uh, you'll be able to download the latest version here. So just download the latest version. Um, this 12.8.13 is what I have. Once that's installed, you can then type npm install g, uh, what was it? p5bots-server, like that. I've already installed it, so I'm not going to do it, but basically if you type that command in, um, it will install it on your computer. So if you go to p5.js, p5.js, click on the library section in p5.js and then search here on Arduino. And that's the p5bots library. Uh, with p5bots you can interact with your Arduino or other microprocessor from within the browser. So it says more there. So you can click through that link if you scroll down, it's just got uh, all the information you need here in the README. So it shows how it works and, and stuff like that. What I would recommend is just scroll down. I mean, I would recommend reading it, but scroll down and click on the Hello World tutorial. That's probably the best way, way to start. So it tells you what you need, how to get your Arduino ready. So the, basically all you need to do there is load in standard Fermata. We've already done that, so we don't have anything more to do. And we need to get the port that the board is using. Uh, that's what we've been doing as well. So we know what port we've got. Next, you need to get this server that I just talked about. So that's where you open your server and install the P5 bot server by running that command. You need to have node installed already. So um, make sure you've got that. And then you download the, uh, the P5 bots JavaScript file. So click, click on that and it's just a JavaScript and you can save that to your local computer. Then once you've got that, it, it kind of goes through um, all of the different um, codes. So I'm going to show a couple of examples of how this works. So I won't go through that whole tutorial. I've got three examples. The first one um, sets an LED color like we did before, but it does it from a web page. The second one uh, uses a knob on the Arduino to control an animation that's playing on the web page. And then the last one is a more ambitious one. It's this doll that turns around, um, you can turn a knob to control the music and there's visuals that go through it as well. So that's kind of where I want to end up. So let's look at the setting the LED color one first. If I switch into my code editor, this is where I do my JavaScript um, coding in the uh, Visual Studio code editor. Um, 
This is a standard P5.js sketch setup. Uh, I've got my P5.js file, the P5.bots.js file that we downloaded, and the P5 sound file. I'm not actually using that here, I can delete that. Um, I've just put them in a scripts folder. Then I've got my index.html, which references those uh, scripts, and it also references this um, socket.io script. So that, that link also needs to be in there. And then it's also referencing my sketch.js, which is here. And this is, the, um, this is where you do most of your programming. So here, uh, just like in the processing sketches, uh, I'm creating a kind of an Arduino object. Here I'm just storing it in this variable b. And so I'm saying var b equals p5.board, and then I'm giving it the address of that port that we've been looking at before, and then I'm telling uh, p5bots that it's an Arduino that we're looking at. Then in this one I've got some variables for my LEDs like before, and I set those to be pins on the board. Uh, and then I'm creating three sliders on the web page that I'm going to use to control the LED and a button that when you press it, it will set the color. So I just take in those RGB values and set that as the background color. And then when the user clicks, I send those uh, values to the um, LED. Uh, from my terminal, what I need to do is run this little command and it's down here where it says start the server. So basically I just say bots, da uh, bots dash go space dash D. Say that fast 10 times. Bots dash go space dash D. And then take the directory where you've got those files saved. So for me it's on my desktop and then I've got this um, RGB LED folder. All of my sketch stuff is inside there. So I've got my scripts, my sketch.js, my index.html. It's all in there. Just drag that whole folder onto the terminal window. And uh, well, we need to put a space in there between the D and that path. But that just puts the path into the terminal. Press return. And you should see something like the server starting. Whoops. Uh, resource busy. Ah, okay, so what's happening? I think, so see here on my terminal, I got this error, throw new error, and it says resource busy. I think that's because um, the processing sketch is still running. <laughs> so I need to stop everything else before I start a new one. It's actually good that that error happened because this is the one of the things, one of the things to know about with the serial port. Only one program can be using that serial port at a time. So if you have one Arduino and two programs that want to talk to it, you're going to have to stop the first one before the second one can use it. So let's go back to our terminal and I'll just run that command again. Same command. We should see server starting and then connected. Yeah, so that's what I didn't see before connected. It says that it's connected to the Arduino. That's a good sign. And it's getting the information for how to connect to the Arduino out of this first line that we put in our sketch. Okay, so it looks for that um, var b equals whatever. That's how it gets the address. So as I move these sliders, let's set it, set it a nice kind of orange color. When I click set, um, you can see that it changed color. Let's make something really obvious. So R, G, B and set it to that. See it's gone blue. Let's look at the next one. The next one was um, using a knob to animate an animation that's running on the browser. So here um, in, my, um, in my little script I've got a, a folder of images. So I've just got like 12 frames of this flower, um, you know, getting growing and, and then um, 
withering away. So that's the animation that we're going to, going to be driving. In the um, P5JS sketch, we just have those in a folder. And then um, in the sketch, we create our board like we did before. Uh, and then also have a variable for the knob that where we're going to read the data from. Preload those images like we normally would in P5JS. And then um, connect to the, to the knob. And then have this function to read uh, once it's ready. And we set the range that the knob uh, works on as well. So these little bits of setup, um, you can find them if you go back to that page that we were on the P5Bots page, and there's a really good list of examples. So if I go back to the main page here, yeah, click on the examples folder, and then you can see all of the different examples that they have. So there's just a basic digital read, analog read, so we're going to be using a part of that to read the analog knob, um, using a button, using a light, there's lots of ones in there. So that's how you actually figure out what are all of these strange incantations are to put in there. Put that in and then in the draw function, I'm just um, reading that, the value from that knob. I just read that in and then I map it to um, a number between zero and the number of frames that I have. So I'm just choosing a frame from my animation based on the value of the knob and then I just draw that to the web browser uh, and then uh, that's it. So let's run that one. If I go back to the terminal, to stop the server, that, that bot server is still running, we just press Control C, uh, the, the Control and the C on the same time on your keyboard. And then you can just press the up arrow. And if actually I just put in, what's the name of it? Knob Animate. That's my next one. Server starting and connected. That's good. Now we should be able to go back to our local host and just refresh the page here. Turning the, by turning the knob, I can make this animation go forward and backward. I think that's actually pretty cool. One thing I want to show is, you know, when you're working with these little um, Arduino components, you end up with something that looks like this, <laughs> you know, just stuff sprawled all over the place. And it can be a really good idea just to make a, a nice little holder for uh, what you're doing. So I, like I spent a little bit of time the other night and made this. I drilled a hole here for, for the knob to go through. And when you get one of these things, you'll find that it actually has a little nut on the end that you can unscrew. So just take that off. And there'll be a washer there as well, probably. And you can just put that through. And then put the washer on. And then that. Just screw it up a bit tightly so it doesn't wobble around. That's good. And this is just like a little, uh, yeah, it's a knob off a, a drawer that I had lying around. So if you have any anything like that, you just need a hole in the bottom. You can basically just press it down onto the top of these knobs. Like if you're producing something for someone to use, you know, just take a little bit of time and make it a little bit nicer. So let's run that animation again with this that's just a much nicer experience from a kind of from a user point of view. Okay, let's look at the last one. Uh, the music playback and servo control. So this is quite a complicated one. Okay, so what you see here is a little animatronic doll um, and uh, it's that same knob that I was using before. And what's going to happen when I play this is uh, the web page will start playing some music. It's like an old music box sound. And 
as that music starts, the doll will start turning around in time with the music, right? You'll also see some visuals on the web page behind the doll. And if I was setting this up in an exhibition, I would probably, probably project that onto the doll or have it displayed on a screen behind. And the visuals will also go in time with the music. And what the user can do here, what the person can do, is they can turn this knob to adjust how fast the, the music plays and how fast the, to the doll moves. So let me start it up. And to start it, I just go onto the web page, press the space bar. So I can take hold of the knob here and speed it up. Or slow it down. I think we all feel like that sometimes, don't we? Let's get it. So that's this little animatronic doll. So the, the servo and the knob is all plugged into the Arduino, but the Arduino is not really doing anything other than running the standard Fermata. All of the complexity of that code is handled by my P5JS sketch. And to do something that complex just on the Arduino, I mean, it would really, it would be a pain. <laughs> so, I mean, it's painful anyway, but um, you know, at least it's possible if you do it in P5JS. So this is the code, and I'm not gonna go into it into a lot of detail, just to point out some of the examples that I've drawn on. So one was uh, this um, sound playback rate example. I use this as an example in my creative coding class that I teach at QT. So on this one, when you run it, you can control the playback rate by uh, the mouse position. Then I also looked at the examples from the P5Bots page, this one here, for things like controlling the servo. So this example on the servo, I looked at that to see how do you actually control the servo. That's making an Arduino and a computer talk. My God, this has taken me forever to put this together. I really got carried away with this damn doll, but it was a lot of fun to, to program this and uh, to make that demo for you. So I hope you found that um, fun and enjoyable. And really what we've talked about is just, yeah, using this library for Marta to make communication easier between the uh, um, computer and the Arduino. And it's really about just using Arduino for the physical input controls and the tangible outputs, and then using the computer for generating the visuals, the complex computations, and things like connecting to a network, which are kind of hard to do just on the Arduino. Hope you found that useful, and I'd love to hear your feedback or questions or ideas.